Hello and welcome. In these videos, I'm going to talk with you about ICO, um, Initial Coin Offering. Now, ICO is something that when I look at the um, Ethereum ecosystem and the blockchain ecosystem in general, but mostly Ethereum, in the past uh, two years or so, they've become quite a dominant uh, aspect of that ecosystem. And, um, well, I, I must admit, this is my own personal agenda, this is my own personal view, but I believe that many of those ICOs, those initial coin offering, are not as sophisticated as they claim to be. Now, this is of course not true for all of them. Some of them are very good, very well executed, have a very strong team and interesting project behind them. But in most cases, those ICOs just um, issue some token, some guy just write a very simple, and I'm going to show you how simple basically, a very simple smart contract. And they offer those tokens to the uh, investors. And sometimes it is done in a very fair way. Uh, what the team offers to the investors is something um, which is real, they don't try to sugar, sugarcoat it. They don't try to claim that they can uh, provide things that they cannot uh, produce. And uh, most importantly, in my opinion at least, they use the funds from that ICOs in order to develop a real and substantial product. However, at least as far as I can see, there are many um, teams that offer tokens that are supposed to be used in their, um, into their application, into their final smart contract. And some people know what an ICO code looks like, but I believe that many others actually believe that the coin that they are just about to buy is already an integral part of a working or almost working smart contract and application and whatnot. And in most cases, this is very, very far away from the truth. No. The truth is that ICOs and tokens in general, uh, they are nothing more than a very simple and almost standard um, smart contract. It's not as if that there isn't any difference between one ICO to the other. It's just that they are usually quite simplistic and um, adhere to a very specific predefined codes. And I want to show you what those codes look like. I assumed you already saw some of those codes, um, at least some of you. And I want to talk with you a little bit about the logic behind those codes and why they were selected and why they are so important and talk with you about some of the concepts that are very prevalent in this whole ecosystem of uh, people who write those uh, ICOs contracts and token contracts. And again, I cannot really hide my own agenda I believe that most ICOs are somewhat, at least to a certain extent, unfair. The team that issued those coins claim that they will be later used in their uh, application as some sort of a way to pay for services within their applications without having any working um, uh, application or prototype or anything of the like. And people might again get the feeling or get the notion that the token that they have just bought is already in some way tweaked so that it will be uh, useful in that application. And I believe that when you will see the code, you will understand that usually that is really not the case. And I believe that this is something that everyone who is um, involved in this ecosystem should know. Um, also developers, future developers, people who are interested in um, how to develop those kind of smart contracts. I think these um, videos, video tutorials, should be useful for them. But just one word of caution, which I really want to emphasize. This video is only for educational purposes. I will not deal with many of the security issues that are relevant for these type of uh, contracts. I will not talk, uh, I, I might mention it, but I won't really explain the concept of overflows, uh, the concept of um, address attacks, the concept of uh, double spending, um, 
the difference between uh, ELC 20 and 23, many other issues that might uh, derive from um, or arise when dealing with such contracts. So these video tutorials, they are just to teach you the basics. Um, in my opinion, they will provide you a very strong um, foundations on which you can later enhance your understanding of this matter. But the quotes that I create here, they cannot really be deployed to the live uh, network. They are not secure enough. They should be audited again and again. Um, but basically, most ICOs are very similar to what I'm about to do with few changes here and there.